So you'll remember from the beginning of our tutorial that the inferior mediastinum is subdivided into three parts, which are the anterior, middle, and posterior mediastina. In reality, the anterior mediastinum is extremely limited in volume and is defined as the space between both the pleural sacs anterior to the pericardial sac. And if we look at the anterior mediastinum from a superior view, we can get an even better understanding of its proportions. So given the fact that it's almost only a potential space, it will come as no surprise to hear that there's very little anatomy for us to examine here. In fact, the only structures that you'll find here are some remnants of the thymus, as well as some anterior mediastinal lymph nodes, such as the prepericardial lymph nodes. Moving posteriorly, we're now entering the middle mediastinum, which is the largest portion of the inferior mediastinum. And it's dominated by the pericardial sac, which means that the middle mediastinum is where our heart takes residence, in addition to the great vessels, such as the inferior part of the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, the pulmonary veins, the pulmonary trunk and arteries, and of course, the ascending aorta. Other major vasculature in this region includes the pericardiophrenic arteries, as well as its venous counterpart, the pericardiophrenic veins. The main bronchi are also considered to be part of the middle mediastinum. And that brings us back to the posterior mediastinum, which is interposed between the pericardial sac and the T5 to T12 vertebral bodies. And although the posterior mediastinum is smaller than the middle mediastinum, it contains quite a lot of anatomical structures, which we're going to find a little bit more about right now. So we're going to begin with what is arguably the most important structure of the posterior mediastinum, which is the descending thoracic aorta. So continuing on from the aortic arch, the descending thoracic aorta runs along the left side of the lower thoracic vertebral bodies before passing through the aortic hiatus of the respiratory diaphragm, and once it's there it becomes the abdominal aorta. As it descends through the posterior mediastinum, the descending thoracic aorta gives off paired lateral branches, which supply the intercostal spaces between the third through to the twelfth ribs, and these are known as the posterior intercostal arteries. Along its anterior aspect, the descending thoracic aorta gives off between two and five unpaired esophageal branches, as well as a number of bronchial and pericardial branches. It also gives off a pair of superior phrenic arteries, which supply the diaphragm. Running laterally to the descending thoracic aorta are the hemiozygous and accessory hemiozygous veins, which receive the contents drainage by the left posterior intercostal veins. And in this illustration, you can also see this vein here, which is the left superior intercostal vein, which drains the uppermost intercostal spaces. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.